This is a brief introduction to the MX Suite from Dan Law, based here in uh, Detroit, Michigan. So the MX Suite can be used to test um, real-time control embedded systems, and it can be used throughout the life cycle. Today we'll just look at how it's applied to testing in DVT, but there are many applications for the MX Suite in testing automotive embedded systems. And this here is testing the equivalent of a body module, and the body module is a software in the loop um, system uh, running on the PC. So this is a system, a virtual microcontroller, and this would be equivalent to the Krona uh, system, except the Krona system is um, more appropriate for powertrain systems where we really want to know very detailed specifics about um, e time execution and make it simulate much more closely uh, an actual uh, microcontroller. So this is the system under test, it's a separate program running, it's a software in the loop entity, and here's our test environment and it's already exported uh, the signals for testing. So really signals can fall into two categories, one are discrete signals, um, one are continuous signals, oh, and then the third one actually is uh, message-based signals. So we'll look at a discrete signal first, this one has just two states, it can be either on or off, and we'll say we want to switch on this switch at a point in time. So to run this test we're just going to, um, we could ahead of time predict these signals, we're just going to run the system and see what happens we see that we switched on the right turn, the right turn output signals um, responded. I can zoom on those a bit and see how they responded. Again, I can uh, look at my transition list and see the details of those measurements. I can see the delta times here. Once I'm happy that that's a good pattern, I click accept as a good pattern. The signal also I click accept and I've got a passing test case. I rewind and run. We think the test case is good. I can accept that and um, uh, move on to a more comprehensive t uh, test case. So we'd say, well, the next test we want to run is to grab the hazard switch and switch that on also. Oops. So we switch on the hazard switch, maybe like this, and we'll rewind and run and see how that behaves. Um, we see that the patterns look good. We can examine in detail. Again, if the patterns look good, we uh, accept those four relay outputs and say that's what we expect. They're now passing signals, and we see actually that we have a message, a CAN message, um, when the hazard switch is on and off. So there's two ways we can look at the CAN message. We can either say we want to look at the full message or possibly look at a signal in a message. So let's go find the signal inside the message. We've got a DVC file and the signal will be in the DVC file on the CAN bus. So there's one signal that's in that message. We add that to the test case. I'll stretch it out a bit so we can see it. We can rewind and run once more. So now we can either look at the two messages and say the messages are good and accept those as a good uh, output. Accept results. Oops, accept results or we can look at the individual signal, which is automatically extracted from the message, decide that's a good pattern, we don't know what the SIP value is until we get the first message. When we get the first message, it has this 221 value. When we get the second message, it has a 51 value. If that pattern is as we expect, we accept as a good pattern, we rewind and run, and our test case is looking good, all passing. So very rapidly and way faster than you could write scripts to do this thing, and way easier to understand an output than looking, for example, at ones and zeros on the left here, they're useful in detail, but over, overall we get a much quicker picture of the behavior of our system looking at it graphically than we do looking at the uh, numbers, um, if for example, in a CSV file or a spreadsheet. Okay, so they were discrete signals, message signals. Let's have a quick look then at uh, continuous signals. So this example here then uh, says we've got a, a dome lamp intensity, the interior dome lamp, and we're going to switch on, open the door that is for, again, we'll say uh, 10 seconds. We run the system. The run button, and we see the dome lamp intensity it jumped to full intensity when we open the door and faded out after we close the door. Um, again, if we like the look of that behavior and we measure it in detail and we say yes, that's how the system should have behaved, then we can accept that as a good behavior. When we rewind, we've now got an expected behavior that matched that behavior. Um, when we're running on a hill tester, we'd want maybe a tolerance band here, and just to emphasize the look of the tolerance band, we'll pull that line down like that and we say here's the expected behavior obviously we're not quite expecting this and we run again here's the actual behavior stays high there it's now a failing test case and the market is failing here because it left the tolerance band right there so we've seen now the three basic message types discrete signals continuous signals and message type signals so as we construct more and more of these uh, test cases and scenarios and really um, the, the way we view scenarios is they're, they're places to build complex sequences out of si simpler um, test cases, so we might make our scenario more complex by picking up test cases, building block test cases, and adding them to the scenario. We can run them in sequence, or we can run them concurrently. Uh, we won't save this, but as we've built up our library 
um, we're now in a position to get to our automated test. And the automated test component in MX Suite is called regression testing. So we have a way of filtering particular subsets of scenarios, or maybe all the scenarios. Here, I think we end up with a, a list of four scenarios we're going to run. It automatically sequences through them um, with the Chroma system. This is how it would look once you got to doing your regression testing. It, it runs all the test cases, puts up an HTML report, gives us a summary of how many are passing and failing, uh, gives us the contents into our report, um, gives us a, a, a detailed view on the scenarios, saying which ones passed and failed. We see this one failed. We'll look in here, we see more de documentation about the scenario um, added by the person creating the scenario, and we see that the five test cases in that scenario, the last one failed. If we jump down to that one again, we get a graphic in the HTML report saying here's where the failure is. We see uh, numerically described the failure. And then um, we see things like uh, the, re the requirements that are associated with this test case, what requirements failed, then also what tolerances were in effect, and then the detailed numerical values for the test case um, in as much detail as you want to examine. So that covers um, very quickly the MX Suite and how it would look to the tester and, and you know, to emphasize again that once we train up a test team, whether they're working um, on a model world, in a Simulink world, with a desktop hill, um, on virtual microcontrollers such as with Krona or our own micro virtual microcontroller or a hill tester from, for example, DSpace or ETAS or National Instruments and Veristand, the test environment to the tester always looks the same. The test cases, to a large extent, um, have an opportunity of being portable through the life cycle and uh, the person, uh, the company who um, who uh, is building their suite of test cases has the flexibility then to decide what kind of equipment they're going to buy later on and um, execute the test cases on the most uh, cost-effective piece of equipment at the best location in the world instead of being tied to a particular piece of equipment because the test cases are in a particular format and only run on that equipment. So that was our brief introduction to MXV and um, now back to um, Krona and their demonstration of the MX suite um, you, you running it against their virtual microcontroller. Thanks for your time.